What's up folks? Today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play the game City of Murkish. Now this is a deck building game and the object of this game is you're going to be trying to get the most amount of prestige points uh, by the card's value, by attacking monsters, and also by getting rewards from certain cards. Now the game that I have is a prototype, so when the actual version of the game comes out it could have different rules, upgraded components, and things of that nature. So let's check it out. Okay, everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the board and all the cards and the different components. So right here, you've got a, a circle, and he's, this circle is basically going to represent a city, and you have an outer city area and an inner city area. You're going to have a deck of cards in each of these different districts, as they're called, that you're going to have an opportunity to purchase. I'll talk a little bit about the cards here in just a second. Now, right over here, you're going to have a player piece that you're going to pick, and you're going to go ahead and start. Uh, on one of these spaces that is in between two of the districts. Here's the different sections. Uh, you have Merchant's Row, the Royal Courts, the Industrial Grounds, the Wilds, and then the Undercity. Now, each of these sections has a different strategy associated with it as far as the cards go, and here's a list of them. Now, when you look at this list, this just kind of gives you an idea if you have a goal in mind, um, you can look at this list to see which of these districts will help you accomplish the goal the best, and then you can try to buy cards from there. So this is a deck building game, and so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be purchasing cards and getting cards that you're going to be putting in your own deck, drawing from, and then using. Now, in the beginning, you're going to go ahead and receive these cards. Some traders, you're going to receive some peasants, you're going to also receive some nomads, and then you're also going to receive a soldier. Just to kind of show you one of the basic cards over here, um, the card's gonna give you the names and then it's also gonna give you the different abilities over here that it's gonna give you. So this one will allow you to gain one power and this will allow you to gain one coin. And some of these cards are gonna have something on the bottom. And this one says once per turn, you may spend prestige as though it was a coin, etc. These cards are gonna allow you to gain different things like coins and power and speed which I'll talk about here in a minute. And some of them are going to have these things here on the bottom that you'll be able to use as well. This is from one of the districts. Uh, right here, this is going to tell you the district the card is from. This is going to tell you how much the card costs to buy. This is going to give you all the uh, different abilities and gifts that you'll be able to do. But you just have to follow what the card says. Now over here on the bottom, this is how much the card is going to be worth in the end. What you're trying to do in the game is you're trying to collect what are called prestige points here by fighting this monster. Now you'll get some prestige points from the cards and you'll also get what are called the purple prestige points, which, which pretty much works the same way as the regular prestige points. The only difference is these prestige points you'll be able to uh, purchase things with, whereas with these you won't. Some of the cards will have something here on the bottom, and this is basically what is called the keyword. But this one says rush, and this gives you the ability on it, and then it also has two symbols on here. What this means is that you can play this ability if you are in the Undercity, which is the blue one, or in the Purple City, which is the Royal Quartz. Right here are what are called prestige points. These are the blue cubes. You're going to be receiving these from some of the cards and also from fighting this monster over here, which is the Hydra. I'll go ahead and show you the Hydra. Now, uh, this is a 3D printout of the Hydra. It's not painted, um, but there's a few different sections. You've got the uh, head part here, which is the Infernal Maw. You've got the Void Maw. You've got the Plague Maw. Uh, you have the thick flesh part of, of the monster, and then on this side you have another Void Maw. Now, depending on what side you are attacking the monster from, there's gonna be different effects that are going to be activated depending on what side you fight him from. Right over here is what is called a rubble token, and there's two of these. Throughout the game, you're gonna be placing them on the board, and they're gonna fit on here like so. Now, a rubble token essentially means that if uh, you're wanting to pass through this area, you're going to have to spend what is called the speed, and you won't be able to fight the monster on an area that has a rubble token. And there's two of these, and they're going to basically be moving around on the board. And now, depending on what space you're on, this is going to tell you what you will be able to do. So from this space, I will be able to purchase this card. If I was over here on this space, I would be able to purchase this card, and I would also have an opportunity to fight the monster. You can also buy cards here from the outer court, as you can see with this arrow. In this section of the game, these are going to be uh, different effects. And here is a list of what these different effects will do if you receive them. You're gonna be receiving these mainly from cards. Now in the beginning of the game, what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll a die. And you'll see over here that there's pit marks on these sides here, like this is a four. Say I roll the five, what this means is that the head part of the maw is going to start over here 
on the five area. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of show you the different actions that you're going to be able to take. And let's just say this is the beginning of the game. Now, right over here, this is going to be a tracker that's going to track different things. Uh, this is going to be the amount of cards you're going to draw. And this is going to go up and down depending on any of the ability tokens that you may receive. Right here, this is the amount of money that you get. This is the amount of power that you have, and this is going to be mainly used to fight the monster. And then right over here is what is called speed, and this is going to be how many spaces you're going to be able to move as you spend it. And then right below here, this is going to be used for the battle of the monster, which I'll talk about here in just a little bit. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and place uh, your deck down that you have, and then you're going to go ahead and draw five cards to start. Now I'm going to look at my cards, and one of the actions I can do is I can play a card, and I can play a card either vertically or horizontally. If I play the card vertically, I'm simply going to go ahead and uh, fulfill the action that is on there. For this one, this says gain one coin. So I'll go ahead and gain a coin. Now I can play as many of these cards that I want to. Um, here's another one. Let's say I decide I'm going to play the soldier. This says gain one power. So I'll go ahead and play that. And so this is basically the way the game's going to start. Any cards that I use, I'm going to go ahead and discard. And uh, whenever my deck runs out, I'll just reshuffle them. Now, uh, later on in the game, as uh, I am playing, I'm going to be able to purchase these different cards here. And uh, these are going to give me different abilities. So let's say it's my turn again. And I decide I'm going to go ahead and play the Adept Adventurer. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just follow along through this. Now, if I decide to play a card horizontally, say I decide I'm going to play it like this, uh, this is going to give me a speed. So I'll be able to collect a speed like so. The second thing you can do is you can move and you'll have to spend a speed to do that. So let's say I spent one speed and I decided I was going to go ahead and move over here. Now, since I'm over here, uh, I will follow what the arrow says, and this is going to allow me to purchase this card if I would like it, and it also is going to allow me to fight the monster. So let's just say I decide I want to go ahead and purchase this card. I'll spend two, and I will go ahead and put this in my discard pile. And let's say I decide I want to go ahead and purchase this one as well. So this is another two. I'll put that in my discard pile and then bring this back down. Now, if I wanted to fight the monster, this is the way it's going to work. Let's just say I happen to have four power. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look over here on the chart. And depending on how much power that I hit the monster with, that is what the effect is going to be. Now, since I have four, what's going to happen is if it's equal to or greater than four, I will get this effect. But it's going to go all the way down. So if it's equal or greater than three, which it is, I'll carry out this effect, uh, then this effect, and then this effect. So let's just go ahead and show you how this works. So right now I'm uh, facing the monster's head. So I'm going to go ahead and spend four of these. And I'm going to go ahead and take four of these prestige tokens and I'll put them down next to me like so. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and follow these. Now, since I have done the knockback, it says ignore wounds, negative effects on the side the attack originated from, which in this case is going to be the head. Now, one thing you'll see here are these little symbols, and these are different types of wounds that you're going to be taking as far as negative effects, unless you've cleared the knockback effect. You've got three, you've got the light wound, you've got the heavy wound, and then you have the bleeding wound. Now, I'll just show you one of them here. It'll tell you exactly what type of injury it is and how you can heal yourself from the wound. What's going to happen is this is going to go into your discard pile and ultimately into your deck. So you might end up drawing these, but they're not going to be able to be used. But it will tell you how you can go ahead and get these cards out of your deck. So the effect that I have uh, avoided says place the top card of your deck into your discard pile. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and avoid that. Now if I didn't avoid that, this is what I would do. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and go down says create rubble. Place a rubble token into the district the attack came from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place this rubble token over here like so. Next thing is crowd retreat. It says you may shuffle the cards in the district the attack originated from into its deck. I can do that, but I'm going to choose not to. Then it says, rotate the monster's pentagon so the head is facing the district the attack originated from. So right now it is. Now, if, depending on where I, I attack the monster from, I'm going to follow these following effects. So if I was attacking the monster from, say, the Void Maw, I would get this negative effect. It says, choose an opponent, that player draws a card. Now, once the last prestige cube is taken, that's going to trigger the end of the game. To score, you're just going to count up the blue prestige cubes that you have, any of the purple prestige cubes that you have, and then also the value of each of the cards that are in your deck. You'll total all those up, and whoever has the most amount of points is going to win the game. If you've ever played games like Magic the Gathering or Pokemon, you'll look at the text of the card, and it'll have like a creature on there, and it'll tell you what its power is and what its ability is, and they've got so many different types of cards that you can go with. Um, now, this game reminds me of that, even though, you know, it has a really big stack of cards that comes with it. 
but each of the decks has their own different philosophy to them that can help with your strategy. Each of these cards does something different. There's some cards that will allow you to take things from your opponent. Others are going to force them to draw a card. I actually got a card that allowed me to go through my opponent's discard pile, buy a card, and then take one or two of their prestige tokens. So there's a whole bunch of these cards. Now, mainly what you're going to be doing in this game is fighting the monster, and it's always best to try to hit him when you have four or more power. Otherwise, you're going to be taking these wound cards. But you have to do some manipulate with the cards so you can get the resources that you need so you can attack them and then buy other cards and also move around. The rubble token makes things interesting because that thing is always moving around and then you know you have to end up spending an extra speed to move through there. And I like this game. I always like deck building games but this one's been is different because you're having to fight a monster and it's almost kind of like a race to try to get as many of those prestige points as you can but at the same time you also have to manipulate the cards that you have in order to keep up your resources. Whenever you're setting up the game, depending on how many players there are, you're going to have a certain amount of cues. But I found that you can basically make the game as short or as long as you want, just depending on how many blue cubes there are. It's a cool game, and I'm looking forward to playing it again. All right, guys, that's my review of City of Murkish. We'll see you. Keep on gaming.